So homework number six is about LNA design. And the uh, figure one shows a uh, common gate uh, amplifier based low noise amplifier. And in this design, uh, the device sizings are done such that M1 and M2 are identical size, but they are half the size of M0. And the channel length is the same for all transistors. And for simplicity, we assume uh, the ID characteristic for transistors have a square law relationship. And transistor allowed is high. We only consider CGS for transistors cap. And M M0's omega t, which is GM over CGS, is 2 pi times 5 gigahertz. For li linearity, Vg, which is the gate voltage of M0 with respect to ground, is set so that M0's VGS minus Vt is 0.2 volt. An optic inductor, which has a very high Q, is chosen to tune out the capacitance at the node X right here at 900 megahertz. Now, the question is, A, to match Z, Z into 50 ohm, what should be the IDS for M0? So Z in is the impedance looking here. Well, since inductor here is used to tune out any capacitance that is connected to X, we are left with one of a GM looking into the source of N0, right? Uh, so how do we find the uh, current from the uh, uh, from GM? Well, in the second page, uh, I, uh, I'm showing you some review material on GM expressions and the current density based sizing. Uh, assuming that the transistor have this uh, square root device relationship. So we know that from the uh, basic analog IC class that the GM, in this case, GM can be expressed in three different ways. And this is simply a review material. So you can go, you can just uh, refresh your memory. And another concept that I bring in is that uh, when, when L is given, and if you fix BGS minus BT, uh, this is equal, equivalent to fixing the current density, which is the current over the uh, transistor width. And um, in this case, uh, you know, there's a very, uh, the, uh, the parameter calculations become very easy as shown here. So if you increase W by factor of alpha, the parameters like ID, GM, and CGS, they all increase by the same factor alpha, and which can be illustrated from this picture here. It's like, uh, you know, if you increase, let's say alpha is two, then uh, if you if you fix the VGS minus VT, and if you increase the uh, W by factor two, that's like having two transistors instead of one, right? In that case, because VGS minus VT are the same, the current through the device is also the twice, GM becomes twice, TGS becomes twice, and but they are, but they are out here, goes down by uh, uh, half, or or go uh, or goes down by uh, one of uh, one of alpha, because R out and R out two of them in, are in parallel, so it becomes R out over two. Now, with this relationship, we can see that the omega t and the gain but transistor in both cases remain the same, even if you change W, because they go up and down uh, you know, by the same ratio. So they all cancel out. So these uh, omega T and gain remain the same as long as you fix the uh, current density of, uh, for the transistor. Now, with this in mind, this, this, uh, this is just the, you know, this, this just refreshes your memory. Of, of your memory that um, probably you learned about this in your analog IC design class um, uh, sometime way in the past, right? But now let's move on to the question here. So the GM here is one over 50 ohm, right? And the GM can be expressed to ID over VGS minus VT. So from here, we can find out that the drain current is 2 million. So this assumes that the LS 
uh, has a very low, you know, the, the, the Q is very high, so uh, parasitic resistance is very small, so we can, we can ignore that. Okay, now the B, what, what is the value of LS? Well, we know that the capacitance at this node is a CGS plus the CESD, right? So that if you find that from the omega t equations, and then CESD is given here, so the total capacitance is 1.64 picofarad. So the external inductor uh, to have a 900 megahertz uh, resonance, uh, you can calculate it here, and that becomes a 19 nanohenry. It's pretty. It's a reasonable size for the uh, external inductor, but it's a pretty big size inductor if you want to integrate on chip. Now, looking at this, uh, somebody may ask, uh, how about this C, this uh, AC coupling cap here? Do I need to consider that in this uh, resonance equation? Well, the answer is no, because this is a large object capacitor. So at 900 megahertz, it is almost like a short, so you don't see that. So you are left with this uh, CGS and this is uh, one picofarad cap. And these three uh, 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 creates a parallel resonance so that the, uh, when you look to the left, uh, the parallel resonance is it gives you a high impedance and you only see one of the GM. So you don't need to consider this uh, AC coupling cap. All right. So what is the gain VO1 over Vs? So uh, from here to here, what is the voltage gain? when only M1 is on. So, so the all the amplified signal goes through to the left, okay? And also we need to find out what the gain is when M1 and M2 are on at the same time. All right. Well, we know that the, uh, the case, uh, common gauge stage, the gain is simply the GM times the R out, right? Output resistance. So in this case, um, gain is given here. It says GM times R1, which is 300 ohm. So the voltage gain is six. When both of them are on, the current splits half and half. So the gain drops to three. Okay, pretty straightforward for that. Now let's look at D. And because this inductor up to now is an external inductor with very high Q, everything works fine, but Let's say you, the board designer comes back and asks you to, hey, can you get rid of that on chip? And can you put that inside a chip? On the, in, don't put it on the board. Then you have to integrate that, right? And let's see uh, how much uh, performance degradation that brings, okay? Okay, so we are looking at D, right? So we want to integrate the LS on chip for cost saving. But the L value found in D is too big. It was 19 nano Henry. So you know, to integrate on chip, like, you know, like 19 Henry Henry is pretty big size. Typically, on chip inductors are uh, from very, you know, small value to uh, about, you know, 10 Henry Henry or less. So 19 Henry Henry is too big. So in order to reduce that, uh, to reduce the L value, we added extra two picofarad between VG and X. So it is asking, what is the new value of LX? L uh, value of ls now okay this is also straightforward so we used to have 1.64 picofarad now with additional two picofarad the, the total uh, capacitance becomes 3.64 picofarad so if you find the new value for ls it comes out to be 8.6 meter henry all right it's a uh, it's okay but the next question is tricky it says Q of the unchip LS from we found from D is only three. So the inductor is quite lossy. Uh, that means it has a big series of resistance. Okay. So with VS, which is here, uh, that has a 50 ohm source impedance, it says how much voltage gain do you lose in dB compared to the off chip inductor case? So what that means is that if you use optic inductor, the Q is high, so that you know you don't, you know, the network here, parallel RLC, LC network is is not that lossy. 
you do not lose you know signal into that uh, LC uh, here. But now with the on-chip uh, inductor, you know you have a large series resist parasitic resistance within the inductor. So if if you create a parallel LC network, uh, you you lose some signal here. And uh, so the gain, therefore, do you lose the gain, right? And 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 the question is, is asking how much do you lose? Okay, and assume only M one is on. Okay. So in that case, what we need to do is that we first we need to find out uh, what the uh, impedance is, what the impedance of the parallel LC is uh, when the Q is three. So we, we know that according to this uh, the L, uh, resonance equation here, uh, the at resonance the uh, the out resist impedance uh, is becomes a real value, and its value is q q square r, which is also equal to q times the omega l. So if you, if you plug it in these numbers, it becomes one hundred forty six ohm. But another thing you need to check is that the Q of the inductors is very low. So you need to check if the IR drop due to on, on that uh, series resistance of the inductor is, is significant or not. So from here, if you find out what R is, it comes out to be 16.2 ohm. Well, we used to have a 2 milliamp. So if you do the 16 ohm times 2 milliamp here, that's this like uh, you know thirty millivolt, thirty two millivolt. Wow, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, VGS minus is 0.2 volt, but we we are using thirty millivolt. That's more than ten percent. So that means there is a significant IR drop across the inductor here. So we cannot ignore that. So let's solve for the new current because uh, M zero now has a less uh, overdrive voltage, the VGS minus VT because you lose some voltage drop due to the finite Q of LS, right? So you can set up the equation here. You can solve for the current. This is the overdrive voltage before, and now this voltage is shared between the uh, IR drop across the inductor, which is I times R, and the VGS minus VT of the M0, where, VG, where where that quantity is equal to square root two i time over mu c x w of l according to the uh, review material. So if you solve for the current, it comes out to be uh, 1.5 milliamp. So it was two milliamp before, now it is reduced. And the GM, which was uh, one over 50 ohm, it come, became one over 58 ohm. So it is less than before. Uh, because of the IR drop um, uh, across the inductor. So if you find the new voltage came from, let's say from uh, VI to the point X, and um, you know this is one over 58 ohm, and looking down is uh, uh, 146 ohm, and we can use the voltage divider equation here. And you can, you can find that the gain now is from here to here is 0.45. So if you find the total gain uh, from VI to VO1, it's 0.45 times the GM, which is 1 over 58, times the load resistance, which is 300. So it becomes 2.32. When we use an external inductor, you have a 50, perfectly 50 ohm matching case. So the gain here is half times the GM of M0, which is one over 50 ohm. And then you multiply with the 300 ohm, it comes out to be three. So if you take the ratio and then take the 20 law, then you, you can calculate that we lose 2.2 dB because you, you have a lossy inductor and that affects the bias current. Okay.